Remember when TV commercials used to inform you about the product being sold? If you've got wood to stain and you want it to dry quickly, use Ronsil Quick Dry and Wood Stain. It does exactly what it says on the tin. Yeah, I'm old enough to remember that. Well, now advertisers are getting a little more ambitious. Why waste time on the product being sold when the product being sold is you? Behold our newest ad campaign. Tasty. Are you sure this will help us sell more burgers? Burgers? John Lewis recently released an ad for home insurance featuring a young boy wearing a dress, makeup and heels. You sure this will help us sell more home insurance? Home insurance? Within weeks, the ad was cancelled. Not because of its ethically dubious amplification of drag queen kids, but because it was deemed potentially misleading. Because you can't claim home insurance for allowing your kid to trash your home. Maybe if John Lewis had actually concentrated on the details of their service rather than their effusive zeal to portray a boy in lipstick, the ad wouldn't have been banned. But it's not really about the product anymore, is it? This year's Halloween ad for Twix chocolate chocolate bar features a boy facing discrimination for wearing a princess dress. A witch nanny then comes to the boy's aid after he's confronted by a bully. Hey, you! Princess! You look like a girl! Why are you wearing that? The witch nanny then conjures up a magic trick to disappear the bully. So parents leave a kid alone until the new nanny comes. She forces herself in, then murders a playground boy. All because he said they look different. Are you sure this will help us sell more Twix? Twix? But hey, who am I to judge? Why shouldn't young children be exposed to the alphabet experience? After all, it's such a healthy lifestyle. When kids aren't being bombarded by gender-bending confusion, they're being blitzed with pandemic porn. Last year, the NHS terrified children by showing Santa being wheeled into the hospital on the verge of dying of COVID. Heineken, the beer company that proudly supports the total abolition of all borders, at least remains consistent by insisting that there shouldn't be any borders when it comes to public toilets. But only if you've had your shot and displayed your vaccine passport. In what has to be the most obtuse, left field and awkward strong arming of social engineering into a crisp commercial ever seen, Grandad dies, goes to heaven and comes back as a gay ghost. Ah, hermano, como te extraño. Oh, tío Alberto! Alberto! Qué sorpresa! ¿Qué hubo, le familia? ¿Cómo están? ¿Quién es él? Es Mario, mi pareja. Are you sure this will help us sell more Doritos? Doritos? Look at this charmingly quaint snapshot of suburban British life. Bear in mind, this is an ad for Bingo, which has an age demographic not much lower than the Queen of England. Are you sure this will help us sell more Bingo? Bingo? Just saw something incredibly rare the other day. A white heterosexual man in a TV commercial. And get this. He wasn't being humiliated. Incredible, I know. Barely believable. I mean, it was Chris Hemsworth, but still. Makes a change, doesn't it? What do they want for Father's Day? Uh, for the media to stop portraying dads as buffoons. Doofus dads, right? I mean, that, that's all we ever see. It's just a burst pipe. I can fix it. <laughs> and my husband is, uh... Oh, uh, you missed a spot. <laughs> Seal, shake, and let Oven Pride do its thing so he can do more. Oven Pride, so easy, a man can do it. Okay, maybe it was my fault. She I... told me to kill the weeds. And you did, along with the grass. I used the wrong stuff. Oh, there were dead spots everywhere. Dad's making dinner. Oh, it'll be fine. Maybe. Yeah. 
It used to be that TV ads made fun of men for being unable to care for babies, but that wasn't subversively antinatal enough. Now women can't be shown to be caring for babies because that would further gender stereotypes. The UK Advertising Standards Authority banned this Volkswagen commercial after just three people complained. Note how the only stereotypes they refuse to amplify are the ones that are positive and wholesome. An ad for Apple's iPad Pro encouraged women to erase men altogether. I'm someone different. I'm free. I'm free. Another Apple commercial showed cloned white men jumping into the sea like lemmings. This PC specialist ad was banned in the UK for perpetuating harmful gender stereotypes because it didn't feature any women, despite PC specialists' core market being 87.5% male. Furthering harmful negative stereotypes about men, however, is not only allowed, it's gleefully encouraged. Gillette's CEO said an $8 billion write-down on its shaving business was a price worth paying for a divisive series series of commercials that pandered to Me Too hysteria. One of the ads featured a white man having to be restrained by a black man in case he acted out on his rapey instincts. Black men in TV commercials are almost universally portrayed as cool, reliable, strong and masculine. And there's nothing wrong with that. In a culture dominated by the likes of Lil Nas X, providing black kids with good, wholesome, fatherly role models is no bad thing. Unfortunately, when it comes to white people, we're being provided with a very different kind of role model. Here's one for you. When mixed race families or couples are portrayed in TV commercials, which is basically 90% of the time now, why is the father or the man always black and the woman always white? Why is it hardly ever the other way around? Can I help you, mate? Do you think these glasses suit me? No. Oh, right. Alexa, drop in on Charlie. She knows her destination, and it's a town called Winning! It's not just limited to TV commercials, either. Isn't it? Sky Cinema's Christmas commercial showcased a happy black family, a happy Asian family, a happy mixed race family, and a white family that, well, see if you can guess what's missing here. Lidl's new Christmas ad. The lesser spotted white father figure has once more been entirely eliminated. Christmas presents itself as an annual opportunity for advertisers to celebrate how much they hate people from a certain faith that you'd normally think would be quite integral to a Christmas TV ad. Tesco's 2017 Christmas commercial featured gay dads, Sikhs and hijabi Muslims, but no direct reference whatsoever to Christianity. In John Lewis's new Christmas ad, 
Christ and Christianity have been similarly expunged. After a backlash, John Lewis said they just wanted to represent modern Britain. Uh, modern Britain is still 86% white, yet in the commercial, the only white character of note is a gender non-binary alien. But it's not just in the context of cultural issues that social engineering in TV advertising lurks in the background. Check out the subliminal message that was slipped into this commercial for AARP Health Insurance. And note how that was broadcast several years before our current infatuation with the permanent pandemic biosecurity police state. The conscious and intelligent manipulation of the organised habits and opinions of the masses is an important element in democratic society. Those who manipulate the unseen mechanism of society constitute an invisible government which is the true ruling power of our country. Edward Bernays, the father of public relations. Bernays weaponized mass psychology, particularly in advertising, to quote, control and regiment the masses according to our will without their knowing about it. He perfected the scientific technique of opinion molding into what became known as the engineering of consent. In 1929, Bernays used advertising to get women hooked on cigarettes, claiming they were a symbol of feminism. If that was happening nearly a hundred years ago, how naive would we be to think it isn't happening now. A few years ago, commercials were about convincing you that consumerism would provide a facsimile of spiritual fulfillment. That phase, as cringe as it was, has been replaced by an altogether more potent brand of behavioral psychology. We've entered the age of direct, sustained mass social engineering. It's everywhere, it's relentless, and to be honest, it's downright creepy. Recolored in seven luscious hues, just... Our impulses are being redirected. But some people have just had enough. Yeah, right. oh, oh, all this yeah. That's, yeah. All this I don't know, for kids to be looking at this, is that okay? No, it's not. It's wrong. This is propaganda. Yeah. This is Normalizing, okay. normalizing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Normalizing. Yeah. I don't know why no, like, no one sees this. No. This is because TV told them not to, not to get uh, not to get upset. Divide and conquer. That's what the Chinese want. They're trying to divide and conquer us. The government is against us, and you guys don't see it. Okay, we're gonna go back to the United States. Okay, we're gonna go back to the United States. You know the phrase, get woke, go broke? Well, it's not just a cliche. Studies show that audiences want to be entertained by ads. They want the ads to make them laugh. They don't want to be lectured. But there's, quote, clear evidence that there's been a consistent long-time decline in the use of humour in advertising. Advertisements used to be cheeky. Some of them would poke fun at received wisdom. They'd invoke taboos, challenge turgid top-down imposed norms and social mores. Now they just amplify establishment narratives to browbeat you into mass ideological conformity. Industry figures show that woke ads are unsuccessful at selling products. And yet, what else are we force-fed but woke ads? That doesn't make sense until you realise that you're the product. The actual number of units sold is purely secondary. Remember that ominous ad busters PSA from the 90s? Your living room is the factory the product being manufactured is you. Couldn't have said it better myself. It's absolutely crucial for you to help me fight the war on free speech by supporting me via subscribe star, link in description and also signing up for my free newsletter at summit.news forward slash newsletter.